Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got a full step-by-step -step guide today showing you how to fit a new clutch on this 1600 diesel uh, Citroen C4 2012 model. Now this one's a 90 horsepower one uh, which only has a uh, solid flywheel on it, not the dual mass. Um, just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below. I'll just show you quickly the bits we're fitting. We've got an LUK clutch kit, comes with a new pressure plate, the wear plate, just show you as well. This in, uh, in German there, that's reading gearbox side, that just to tell you which uh, position to put it in, and the release bearing as well. So. Um, if you check out the links in the description below, I put part numbers and links to all the parts used, all the tools, and full list of all the torque settings for everything as well. Obviously we're using a two poster ramp today, it does make this job a, a lot easier, it is a bit tricky on the floor but I have, I have done it in the past, all you need to do really is just jack it up on the sills, quite high both sides, um, put some axle stamps under it, just as high as you can really. Um, but to start with, first thing we're going to do is just get the, um, get the two front wheels off, we're going to need to strip a few bits off on the top here so we can access the gearbox mount, we're going to need to take the battery off, basically I've just just started to unclip that but just take the top cover off there there's a few um, there's a just a push release clamp there for the terminal on the battery and then I have to take some of these off as well you just want to just take a quick note of the positions of them it might be worth just taking a quick picture if you're a bit unsure I'm fairly confident because I've done a few but um, sometimes when you just put it back it can be quite hard to remember the order so maybe worth just taking a quick picture um, but once you've got some of them off there's just a little clip around the back there that just a little tab that needs pulling out and once you've got that out and some of the connections off this plug off there you can then slide just unclip it either side and this whole thing will lift up but we'll get that out to start with get the wheels off and we'll run you through it all a step at a time So we've just done that, got the tray out, all the tray you do is just flip it up at the bottom and then it'll slide out. And now you can see the uh, positive terminal on the battery as well. So you just want a 10mm uh, socket to get that to crack that one off there. And once you've undone that, just lift the terminal up and then you're going to want another 10mm uh, just on the little clamp there. That's just the battery clamp. So once we've done that, we can pull the battery out. Now that the battery's out, we've just got to remove the actual tray itself. Two 30 mils, one at the front there, another one at the back there. And we may just have to take these two on the side out as well. So just take these two out now and I'll let you know if you've got to come out as well. Let's see, now the actual tray is out. Just underneath them, there's another two 30 mil nuts as well. Just sit under that, so one at the front, one at the back. And then we'll just take them two side ones out now, it's a bit more access. And we can get the metal tray off. We've got them two out. There was just another one just to the back there as well. And then just want to be getting this tor little torque screw out there. And you just want a little Torx 30 socket to get that out. Um, but just, just coming under the arch, if you just flip this top corner out, top of the spring, you've just got one more 30 mil bolt as well. Just, just see that, just there. You'll be undoing that as well. So. Well, that's the tray out. There's just a couple of um, bits of loom clipping, one clips on in the back there and a little one on the front there as well. So you just need to clip, pull that loom off and you can get the tray out. 
Right, now that uh, that's out of the way, you can just see we've got the uh, gearbox mount here. We're not going to undo it yet, but we do need access to it ready uh, for when we've got some of the underneath work done. But all I'm going to do just on top now, you've got the gearbox um, earth strap there. We've got a 13mm socket to get that off. And um, there's a plug for the reverse light switch, I think it is just there. Uh, it's just simply you just flip the tab open and then you can pull that off. We'll just pull that out of the way as well, and then we'll get it up in the air. Uh, move on to some of the steps underneath, like getting the drive shafts out. Right, so now I've got it up in the air, I'm just going to run you through the next few bits and I'll get all them done and run you on to the next step after that. Basically, we're just going to get this left hand dart slider out of the way, um, just a load of torque screws around the outside. You only really need to get the front half off. And just fold it around the back of the wheel. I'm going to take both drive shafts out and to do that you just want to pull this R clip out, it just pulls down, you've got a little retainer for the nut that will just pop off and you need to undo both hub nuts and we're going to undo the ball joint uh, nut there, but take the arm off the ball joint so you get the shaft out and you take the under tray down, the main under tray, we've got a load of 10 mils just holding that on all the way around the other side drive shafts is that the same procedure um, but there is also i'll just show you once we've got the under tray down there's a center bearing that holds the driver side shaft because it's a bit longer and i'll just show you getting that off as well and um, we'll start with i'll just get to all them bits done then run you through that uh, next step also just quickly as well always worth before you get started just give all your nuts a quick scrub with a wire brush and a bit of soap will penetrate and oil just give you half a chance of getting them all out so. Just got the arch liner forward now. Just under the that, I did just use a normal hammer on that. It's only because I knew this one wasn't quite tight, but um, really, if it is a little bit tight, you want to always be using a copper hammer, or at least just put the nut on and just give it a bit of a tap with a nut on. And at least if you wind it off, if it does just catch the threads or anything, you can clean the threads up. But I just, I know I was fairly gentle with that. Just give it a tap just to make sure it was loose. Um, but after undoing the ball joint nut, I'll just give this a nice few firm whacks with a hammer just on the side and that just cracks it off and um, we've got the lever bar now just uh that just quite it's quite an handy tool i'll put a link in the description below to them what it does is just sit in hook the arm and it gives you a nice bit of leverage to pull that arm down um, if you ain't got that you sometimes just get a really big long bar go through the arm back under the body there and pry it down sometimes it can be quite tight to get off so Either that or a ball joint splitter, but the ball joint splitters are always a bit rough, they tend to uh, split the rubber boots, so I'm just going to use that bar on it. And once we've done that, uh, once we've popped that down, you should then be able to uh, pull the hub, pull the um, outer CV out through the hub. This side drive shaft will be able to just pull it out. It's a little bit tight, sometimes you can just, just work them a little bit and it pop out. If it's really tight, you might just need to get a bar in at the back and just pry it away from the gearbox. But, um, get this side out and then I'll just show you the other side. Uh, so I've just got out of the uh, out of the hub there. Um, but uh, one thing I forgot to say, once you um, pop the shaft out of the gearbox, it will lose the gear oil as well, or at least a certain bit until the level hits that point. Um, but uh, just, just just forgot to mention it, but uh, just you can see it started leaking a little bit there. But um, we've got a catch, uh, like an oil drainer to put it into, but this is the drain bung for the gearbox oil. So we'll just undo that and just drain all the gearbox oil out first. Um, if you're going to reuse it, you like catch it in a container we've got some fresh oil to put in tonight so 
uh, but I'll run you through the quantity and refilling it when it's done. Uh, but I'll just, uh, before we do, just pull the shaft out, we'll just drain the oil out quick. As you can see, it's got like a square drive on it, or you can use, I'm pretty sure it's a 21 or a 22 mil socket to, to get that off. Just leave that to drain down a few minutes and uh, then we'll just put the drain mug back in and uh, we'll run you through the torque setting for that um, but I did just make sure the copper washer just stays stuck to the gearbox so just make sure you flick that off so you don't lose it the torque setting for the drain plugs 35 newton meters uh, if you haven't got a torque wrench we're using a torque wrench if you haven't got a torque wrench it's just um it's just a reasonable nip really not too tight all i'll do is just lightly nip that in and then I'll torque it up uh, when we're running through some of the torque settings at the end. Just run you through the other side drive shaft. And all it is, you can just see the shaft. Basically, it's got a centre bearing on it, which is where it holds it in the middle. And it has this like U sort of bracket around it. You can just see there, there's one torque spot there, another torque spot around the other side. You just need to undo them two bolts and get this out. And that basically holds the bearing in the uh, hold to send the bear in there so once you've undone that you'll be able to pull this driver side shaft out and get that out of the way as well so you just see where it goes into the gearbox there and once we've got that out the only other thing we're going to do this little front uh, section of under tray is going to come off and then the front sort of cross member piece of the uh, subframe there needs to come out as well so we'll get that down uh, and then the the, uh, the proper procedure does show that you need to take the exhaust uh, flexi off uh, but the only reason and the exhaust and, the, and this bit of the exhaust off but it's a major job and the only reason for getting it off is getting this awkward bolt out there one of the gearbox bolts but all we normally do is just crack that off and wind it out as we're pulling the gearbox out and do the same again as we're putting it back in but I'll run you through that uh, when it gets to that stage so, but yeah for now we'll just get the shaft out get this front under tray off and uh, that half that uh, front sub subframe section That's the other side drive shaft out. I'm just show you. That's where the centre bearing sits in there. Oh, did just put the pry bar in and just lever the shaft out of it. So. With that out, we're just going to start on this uh, subframe support now. So uh, it just um, slides in at the back here. Uh, but at the front, we've basically got three 10 mils. One at the top there, one at the bottom, and another one just on the other side at the back here. And I'll undo them, undo this one, and we should be able to just pull the uh, bumper away from that and open and just get that out. So just do that next. Just for them out, there is just the uh, 16 mil I forgot to mention as well, just up the top there. So. Once that's that, you can just simply put, just pull it down and just slide it off. It just goes on these two runners at the back there. So. And just see, just pry that slightly forward there. So see quite a bit more of the gearbox now. Uh, next thing we're going to do, um, take the, got an external slave cylinder on these. It's always a bonus because you don't have to bleed the clutch after. Um, so you can just see it's got an Allen bolt there at the, uh, just trying to focus on that, an Allen bolt at the bottom there. There's another one at the top as well. So we undo both of them and we'll just pull the um, slave out of the way and probably just tie it up at the front just so we don't catch it or anything. And there's a pipe there as well for it. So I'll like, unclip that pipe from the bracket on the gearbox uh, just so that doesn't get snagged and damaged as well. So just nip that off there, uh, whip that off next. Just 
just pulled the slave round, knocked it out of the way. And just say as I did, it's not really a problem, but the, uh, the actual rod just popped out. And all that does is just sit in there, sit in that recess, and you just need to push the boot over. So I'm just gonna keep this out of the way now so it doesn't get lost. And we're ready to put it back in. We'll just uh, pull that in, because it just literally sits into place and then butts up against the back edge of the fork arm there. Right, now the slave's out of the way, uh, just come round, next job to get the start motor off. Uh, if you just come round to this side of the uh, engine, you'll just see the start motor up there. That's the back edge of it there. And there's these six mil Allen bolts holding it on. You just see one there. There's another one round. I think there'll be three in total, so one at the bottom there. You can just see from the, uh, the back here, um, one over there at the top, and there'll be another one around the back. So a little bit awkward to get out, but not too bad if you just use um, your six mil Allen socket and just the right size extensions you can get in there. All you need to do is just wind all three bolts out. And just pull the starter motor back. You don't need to undo it, just pull it back out of the gearbox. So we'll do that next, and then we'll drop it down, get the gear change cables off, and then it'll be onto some of the gearbox bolts. And just show you quickly while, uh, while I'm getting the start motor off, I'm just gonna take this support bracket off as well. So it's quite a few bolts holding that on, but we'll just get it out of the way. So we've got two of the starter motor bolts out. Let's see these Allen keys here. Um, they're a bit awkward too. The bottom one was really easy, but the top one, the best way I found was sort of reaching in from the right hand side with this. And then they just come up with the hand over the sort of exhaust and up in there. And you can just guide it into place to fit it into the bolt. I cracked it off with a bigger sort of ratchet with a flexi head. And then I got in there with a little ratchet. It's just um, coming up there. This little bracket there really gets in the way. So, But now I've got two of the bolts out. There's one more bolt on the end, but it goes in from the opposite way. It goes in from the gearbox side into the starter motor. So what I'm gonna do now is drop it back down, get the bolt out um, from on top. We'll get the, gear get the gear change cables off next. And did just take this support bracket off as well. This big uh, black bracket there just sits over this section of the gearbox there. I've just taken that off as well. So just whip that off. Um, but yeah, I'll show you the gear change, getting the gear change cables off now and getting that starter motor out. And just before I'm clipping the cable from the top, we'll actually just uh, undo the, uh, just get the support bracket out because it'll probably just be a little bit easier from underneath here. Uh, but if you just see on the cables, plastic housing bits there, basically you just need to work that and just pop both of these out. So they can get really tight these because um, often they've been left and not, to, not been put out very regular. But all you need to do, and you just sort of work your bar in you just need a gentle tap and they'll come out so but they, uh, they are quite a tight fit so you can just get your bar right in the gap and so with the back bits out I'm just going to pop the uh, ends off now and it's probably a bit hard to show you on the camera, but basically what you need to do is pinch the two white bits together and then push the middle in and you'll be able to get it off. So I'll, uh... yeah, you can't quite do that while holding the camera, but yeah, basically you see these two little outer tabs, they just push inwards and then when they're in, you can push that middle bit down and that'll release it around the ball. I do get a little bit tight again, so you don't sort of work it with two hands while you're doing it. Obviously we've got both off now. And once we've got them off, we'll be able to get that uh, starter motor, access that starter motor bolt.
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just show you now, but it's a bit tricky uh, to see. Just coming up under this, this side. Just trying to get the camera. But that uh, other starter motor bolts just there, so that uh, six mile Allen key. So we'll get that out, and then we should be able to uh, just pull the starter motor out of the way. Right, so now we've got the start motor bolt out and then gear change cables off. That's pretty much most of the stuff from the top done. Obviously, we have just got to drop this yet, um, but um, all I'm going to do next is get it up in the air. We've got some brackets and bits and bobs that hold some of the cables on. Uh, once I've got it up in the air, we'll get the transmission jack underneath it. We'll just come up, just simply drop this. Um, we'll probably just undo that centre bolt there to get that uh, nut off. Might have to undo these two either side of it as well, just to make it pull through the hole a bit better. And then when we drop it down, we'll undo all the gearbox bolts once the gearbox is just lowered down slightly. So, um, but I'll run you through that when we get it up in the air in a minute. Um, obviously, as well, just undone that start motor bolt, but I just have to just pull the start motor out slightly from the back as well. And because we're doing it in, up on the ramp, I'll just leave an 18mm socket ready for that and the 13 so that we can come up on the ladder and drop that to, without messing about. Right, so now we've got it up in the air, just to give us a bit more scope as well, just uh, allows us just to give us, um, just to give us a bit more movement on getting the gearbox out. We're just going to undo this back uh, engine mounting. We just take the main one out through there and that bolt out through from that side. You know what it does? It just gives us a little bit of sort of floating room. We can just work it back and forward. So, um, one more thing you need to be getting out as well. Um, just the awkward bolt that I was on about earlier on, this one that goes, goes in the side. And this is the reason that the uh, official procedure, they want you to take the whole DPF off. Um, all we are gonna do is get out. You just want to undo this nut here, which holds the DPF back to the um, engine block. You just do undo that nut. And then this is a stud here, and you just want a little e-torque socket. Yeah, it's got an E7, it is, so you just see that there. And once you've undone the nut, you just put that e-torque socket on the back of the stud there and wind this out. And then it just gives us loads of room, a bit more, a bit more room, just to get this bolt out there as well. So I'll just whip that out, the back engine mount off, uh, and then we'll get the transmission jack underneath it. Before we drop the um, gearbox onto the mount, I will just get the uh, spanner in and just crack that one off as well. So just so it's loose, then we can wind it out when we pull the box out. <clears throat> With that stud out, I've actually been able to wind it out. Sometimes you can't quite get it out, but I've been able to wind it out enough um, just to actually leave it there loose. And then we put the box back in, you can just simply wind it in by hand style. And stuff. Um, I've just put the vertical jack underneath, underneath the sump there. It's using a bit of wood so it doesn't damage the sump. And that'll take the weight of the engine. And when we undo that gearbox mount, up the top there, we can just slowly drop it down now. And uh, get the gearbox bolts undone. Just make sure you just put a little bit of load on the engine before you undo the uh, bolt, just so it uh, doesn't just drop down. So, Just lowered that slowly so we can see around the box a lot better now at all the bolts. Um, if you was doing it on the floor, obviously you'd just want your normal jack under the uh, sump there. So um, we've got luxury over lifts. So. Um, but now all I'm going to do is just run round outside. We've got a couple of them out already. Um, just undoing these uh, all the gearbox bolts and just see up the top here. There's a couple bolts just holding the brackets on with the cable with the loom on it. So. Um, sometimes it's ideal just to get everyone out and just leave like a, a nut on the bottom one just so it's a nice easy one to get off and once the box is loose you can just uh, work the box out so um, I'll just get these bolts out now and then run you through pulling the gearbox out so. Uh, 
Nice. We've nearly got all the top bolts out and the side ones as well. Um, sometimes you can get away with leaving this bracket on at the back, but actually on this C4 it's quite tight, so you probably just want to take this um, back lug uh, sort of bracket off as well. Just got a bit of a lug out of the back of it, which tucks into the subframe there. So two 16 mils, we want to get that off. It'll just allow us a little bit more room, just to make it a bit easier to get off. show you before dropping the box um two of the there's some 13 mils that come in from this side and um, just need to be careful just to make sure just get the ones that do go through the actual engine casting into the gearbox so there's this top one up there um, but there is some lower ones these 13s you don't need to do them they're only part of the gearbox so but you can see this top one there goes through the actual engine casting so you can get that out and then also just one more behind the back there as well, just on top of the flexi. So. Uh, but to get them out, should should be ready for working out. Once you've um, once you've got them all loose, just work the box lightly, um, and it should just crack off, and you'll be able to just work it back and pull it out. If it's really tight, you, there'll definitely be a bolt left in because they're not normally too tight once you've cracked them off. Just a bit of a firm wiggle, and the box will crack it off. So. 113 mil it is quite hard to see um, but it's the the other one just to the right holding that bracket on and just sort of guide yourself in uh, just to get that off Just got it ready for dropping out now. Just got the last two bolts out the top. There's a bit of an awkward 16 mil to get, and then another 13 mil that holds that bracket. Um, I'm just going to use an E8 uh, torque socket as well, just to get this stud out there, and that'll just make it a little bit easier, just for the sake of getting that out before we drop it. But the box is all loose now. So that's the gearbox out now. I'm just say you want a few of you, um, just helps a little bit to lift it out. So, uh, but now that it's out, I'm just going to want a Torx 40 socket uh, under the seat. I think it's yeah, six Torx bolts there holding the clutch plate on uh, the pressure plate. So, we'll get that off. And then we've got inside the gearbox, we've got the uh, release bearing to change as well. So, I'll just run you through changing that in a minute. But uh, that's very straightforward to swap over. Uh, but we've got the box out as well, just give it a bit of a clean out inside, the wipe down, and then we'll just put some grease on there, but yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. We'll just whip the pressure plate off quick, and uh, just show you the clutch, and then uh, go on to the next bit. You can just see the flywheel now, obviously this one's a solid one, you can see where it has been a bit warm, been slipping a little bit. I mean, if this was too bad, the flywheel would need skimming, but it's not too bad, really, that. So, I'm just going to give that a light clean up with some embry cloth. Just give that a scrub down. And then looking at the clutch itself, you can just see, you can just see it's uh, how worn it is. There the rivets, and it's right up to the rivets, so it's well worn out. Um, if, you, if your um, new clutch plate doesn't say gearbox side on it, just take note of you, always keep it in the same position, then you can just compare it with your new one to make sure that uh, you get it in the right, it just, they do go, they do only fit one way around. So. Uh, the other thing you want to always be doing as well, just before you uh, trying to put the box back in and damage them, get your new pressure plate and just slide that over the shaft there. Just like that. Just make sure that the splines all line up so you know it's definitely the right one before you try fitting it and damaging it.
there's the new release bearing and all that does just has two little lobes there that slide over and just hook behind the fork and we just pull that right forward just work it a little bit and just pull that off there so and you see the two little guides there on that one so and so all I'm going to do now is just give everything a wipe down just keep your foot nice and still there just give it a bit of a clean out with some brake cleaner and a spray down and then I will just put a bit of uh, white grease on here or just normal grease once that's once I get that a good clean up and then we'll refit the bearing into place So we've just got a bit of clean out now. And one other thing that, um, to be honest, I do normally always replace these every time, um, but I didn't get one today. Um, I can't get hold of one now. So, um, but sometimes I'll put a link in the description below. Always worth getting one of these guide tubes. Basically, just three 10 mil bolts. It's got seal on the back, but this bit does just wear. You can already see it has just worn slightly. That so, um, it's not too bad. There's no uh, raised lips or anything like that on it. So. Uh, but if it is too bad, I'll just get out a bit of a clean up with some emery cloth as well. Uh, but uh, now I've cleaned that up in there, I'm just going to give it a little bit of smear of grease just around the guide tube. And I'll locate the uh, release bearing into there as well. Right, so I've got that new release bearing on. I've just test it by moving the fork arm on the outside there you can just see how uh, that moves nice and freely on there so just put a tiny bit of grease on the shaft as well don't need a lot on there um, but you do just want to be careful just to check you just uh, pull it forward and just slide it in and hook them clips in at the back but make sure you've got them in just make sure you can't pull that off top and bottom because you can uh, make the mistake of just hooking it on on one of them so and you probably won't notice that until you get it all built back up and press the clutch and then if it pops off you've got to take the whole box out again so just make sure that's properly on that's all so now that that's on i'll just say we'll give the um give the flywheel a quick clean up with some emery cloth it looks a bit better now uh, and then we'll get the actual actual clutch located into place uh, i'll just show you roughly lining it up as well and run through the torque settings when we're doing that so we've got the new wear plate and pressure plate Obviously it says gearbox side on there, so that side needs to point towards the gearbox. So we'll be fitting that into the pressure plate housing there. What I'll we'll do now is I'm just roughly going to mount that up onto the flywheel there. Obviously it does seat on the dowels there. I'm just going to seat it over and then I'll, just while it's loose I'll roughly show you it lining up but you need to get the centre lined up. I'll just run through that in a minute. Uh, just wound the bolts in really lightly just to hold it now this is part of like a clutch centering tool there but you can do it without basically all you need to do is just on the inside you just need to make sure that that's held dead central so if you just look at just sort of get yourself in position where you're ironing it up dead straight and just hold it in the real central position while nipping all the bolts up and uh, it just allows when you put the gearbox in it's, it obviously lines up straight and it'll just go straight in if you've got it slightly off it'll be a bit really tight well you won't really get it in so all i'll do with this it's not the proper tool for that but it does just help when you've got it in. you can just sort of pull that and hold that central so i'll just hold that in there and then just nip all them bolts up the torque settings 20 newton meters so if you just run them up all evenly with a light nip just hold the centre plate and then we'll run round it with a torque wrench. Right, so just got all them just slightly wound in. We'll just move the alignment tool so it's not really the proper tool that but basically when you're looking at it square on you can just see that the pressure plate is dead central inside. So. And we'll remove that little tool now, but as I say, it's not exactly the right one. I just use it as a rough guide just to help me move it a bit. So um, now I'm going to torque them up. I've got digital torque wrench tonight. Um, it's a nice bit of kit really, but you can do it with a normal one. If you haven't got a torque wrench, 20 newton meters isn't too too much really. It's just a 
just a little bit more than a light nip. So I've just wrapped, run around them nice and evenly, just chalk them up correctly. So that's nicely talked up now. And just so you just double check it again before you put the box back in, but the centre plates there is nice and central. Um, just show you, just quickly looking around, if you was unsure about any bolts as you're undoing them, where your main ones are, that's one that awkward 16mm at the top there. So, um, yeah, a few big ones in it, and then some 13s from the other side as well. So, uh, but now that we've done that, we'll just uh, we'll get the box lifted back in. So, sometimes you, you want a few of you doing it, just makes it a little bit easier. We just sort of have to lift it up around the back of the subframe here and just guide it in over that stud at the top as well so uh, sometimes the top stud from the engine mount can be a little bit tight on here so just watch that wire while you do it um, but we'll just work the gearbox in and then run you through um, some of the next steps i'll uh, fly through the video on some of the bits obviously it's just building it back up as we've took it apart uh, but I'll run you through all the correct quantities and some torque settings uh, for the level plugs etc Nice, right, so that's got the gearbox back in. So it can be a little bit awkward. You just have to try and sort of lift the diff up there. And just between a few, if you just give it a little bit of a wiggle as you're working it in, then you could take that stud out of the top if you're really struggling, but it's not too bad to do so. Um, but as soon as you've got it butted up and just worked in, it's worth just getting just getting one, uh, one bolt in and just giving it a light nip up just to pull it in so it doesn't fall back. Um, but the only other thing I did say, I forgot to say, just to be careful with, uh, the clutch fork here you could just put a cable tie around the gearbox there and the clutch fork there just to pull it this way just so that the um, release bearing don't come off on the inside but as long as you know about it and you're careful not to knock it too much you don't really have to worry about that so um, it's probably just worth a quick mention so but yeah all we're going to do now is just whip round it all get the main gearbox bolts all done back up get all the brackets back on and uh, i'll just run you through the uh, doing the level before we get too much back together. Just show you quickly, just this back bracket there, it's just a bit easier if you can just get a bar in on the back of the engine and just lever it forward, it just gives you a bit more room to get it over the stud. So, um, but once we've got that on, um, we'll, uh, with the box is secure enough now, once we've got all the awkward bolts in, we'll just push it across, we'll, we'll jack it up, send it through the hole there, and then we'll nip it back up to the uh, top gearbox, nip the top gearbox mounting back up there and we can just carry on getting everything back and um, we'll have to have the drive shafts in just for a run through the gearbox level filling oil filling so uh, but yeah we'll do that when we get there
Uh, the slaves are all fitted back in now, so I did just fit that, uh, pr uh, fit the um, shaft in the middle back in. It just pushes the actual slave cylinder in as you do it. Just nip that up. It's just a quite quite a light nip on the roll, so it'll be too tight. Just clip the cable in there, so um, it shouldn't need bleeding. Um, if it does need bleeding, we can run you through that procedure if need be at the end. So um, most of these bolts around the uh, the main bolts are nipped up now, so they don't have to be too tight with them. Just a good nip, really. Um, but now I'm just going to run the drain rung up, the proper torque setting, which is 35 newton meters. So I'll nip that up, and then this is your level one there. I'm just going to crack that off and undo that, uh, but I won't fill that up till we've got the shaft in. So. Just want to be careful with your level one when you take it out, just make sure you keep the washer there again. Just before we can finish off underneath, um, I've had to just come back down just to put that starter motor bolt in, just so we can line them all up evenly to put that in. Uh, but where we are, where we are, back on top, we just push the gear cables back in, and all you do is just push the um, the second bit into the slot. It's fairly easy to just slot in, but you'll just hear it click home, and then once it's home, you just simply push your your cables. They just simply push straight on, and you'll, you'll hear them again just pop into place. So put your gear change cables on, um, connect up your um, like the reverse switch, the air fleet, and get all that built back up. And then we had to put the starter motor back in before putting the drive shaft in. Um, so once that's in, be able to do the uh, fill the level up as well. So just run you through that in a few minutes. Got that back engine mounting all done back up as well. Right, it's just going to fill up the level now. If you just take your uh, level bung out, uh, basically they don't have a dipstick or anything on them. This is the uh, where you fill it up and it's the level bung. And all we're going to do is pump the gear oil into there. I mean, the official quantity from empty is 1.9 litres of 75.80 or 75.90. So, um, but uh, we've got a this style pump that goes onto the tub the, uh, the gear oil tub there i'll put a link to in the description below to one of these because they're quite handy but all i do is just slowly fill it up and then once it you might just get a little bit of spill out but you want it to get to the level where it's um it's right brimmed flush with that and it's just just running out so and then just let it uh, just run until it's so it's not pouring out and then you can just nip it up and the torque setting for the level uh, plug is 22 newton meters so just get that filled up with oil now uh, and then I'll, we've just got a few bits left to build up. We've got the front under tray to put on there. We've got the arch liner to put back in. I'll just get all that done, uh, get it back down, just get the battery built up, and then just run you through any little steps at the end top. Um, you can see it's not too bad a job, really. Um, it does help having a ramp, um, but uh, I thought I'd put the video together as a bit of a guide and a run through. So I hope you liked the video and it helped. Um, if it did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, but I'll just, get, I'll just uh, flip through these last few bits now and then skip to the end and just show you just checking the clutch. Just see there, it's went slightly over full like that. So all I'm going to do is just let that, I've just got that running into a drainer. And I'll just let that run and just till it settles and just stops pouring out, just so it's just a nice little dribble. And then I'll put the drain plug in and nip that up to 22 newton meters. It's worth just giving it a bit of a wash off around anywhere where you might have any leaks. Like right, you've got the slave cylinder there, just washed off where I've uh, filled it up with gear oil. And um, I do just run it up at the end, it's just nice and easy to check and make sure you ain't got any leaks. Right, so all the underneath work's done now. Just got the wheels back on, torque them up, 
And just got the battery charge put back in, put the battery in, connect all that back up. Two little connectors on the front there to get it back on. And I know you want to be doing at this stage now, you can just check the clutch. Um, just checking the clutch to start with before it obviously you can't run it at the minute with the um, battery not connected. But if you just get your clutch pedal nice press, just make sure it feels nice and uh, nice and smooth. Make sure you can't hear anything at the gearbox end. So that feels absolutely spot on. So just get the battery um, and everything back together now. Uh, just give you a quick update. Um, just to let you know if there's anything you need to know differently. And just let you know it's all okay. Well, it's just got everything back together now. That's all the battery built up. All the uh, terminals put back on. All I did was just connect everything up. Put the connector in there. Just left the um, positive terminal just till last to put on. And it's just that simple quick release uh, bunch there. So um, once that's on, it's always worth at the end just having a good look down, just making sure everything's clipped in the um, in the locating holes, stuff like this where the loom goes in a, a little locating clip, make sure that's all right. Obviously, make sure you've got no bolts left over, and um, just strike it up. Just make sure everything seems okay. Just give the um, pedal a bit of a pump and just run through all the gears. Um, but yeah, so not too bad a job really and I uh, hope the video helps someone have a go at theirs. Um, but thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.